This is the Final Whistle Podcast with the Wrexham AFC media team. The final score at the race course, Wrexham nil, Halifax town nil. But it felt like a big match, that. Halifax, top of the table last Saturday. Wrexham, top of the table going into this match. One point separating them, and yeah, that felt like two serious teams to me. Halifax had a very, very clear game plan, and they executed it to perfection. But Wrexham was the team making the running, trying to break them down, just couldn't quite find a breakthrough. Frustration for the fans, who at times were frustrated when Wrexham were passing it backwards, but it was what they had to do, I think, to try and work their way through this Halifax team. And I think ultimately, that, that, that's that, well, as they stand at the moment, that looks like two serious teams there going head to head. It'd be interesting to see if they can both sustain it till the end of the season. Wrexham again made changes. Jake Lawler came in for his debut. James Jennings came back at fullback. Kevin Roberts, I assume, injured to miss out and also made alterations in uh, more attacking positions as well. As Paul Rutherford returned to the side replacing Nicky Devedix and Stuart Bevan, who inevitably wasn't really going to play two games Saturday, Tuesday, having been 90 minutes on the Saturday, was replaced by Raquel Pike. And Wrexham were immediately on the front foot and very nearly went ahead in the fifth minute to an extraordinary effort by Mike Fondop. When he got the ball 25 yards out and decided to launch into a shot, I just thought, well, that's a stupid decision. As it soared towards goal, I thought, well, he struck it well, but it, it's going miles over. I think the keeper thought the same because he didn't react very quickly and then it started dipping. And the moment where I realised actually it was something rather special was when the backpedalling keeper lunged desperately upwards, <laughs> desperately hoping to get something on it. He didn't and the ball slapped squarely onto the bar and bounced away to safety. Tremendous, outrageous, audacious effort by Fondop. If that had gone in, the game might have been a bit different because Halifax would have had to come out to play a bit more. As it was, Halifax made the next couple of chances on the breakaway and I must say, look, we're going to talk a lot in this podcast about Halifax being defensive, um, but I'm not saying that as a criticism. They played with terrific energy. Like I said, they had a very clear game plan. They were very deep defensively, and they were not committing players forwards. Uh, they consistently had seven men behind the ball, and yet they still were a danger on the break. Now, we know from last season, remember Wrexham's team, you, you can set a team up to be solid and defensive by all means, but it's difficult to inject threat into a team that, as a priority, is looking to keep a clean sheet and defend. Halifax successfully did that. Their front four had pace and presence, and they were a terrific threat on the break and so even though yeah I mean would I say they parked the bus not quite but they, you know they they certainly had a decent sized van in there parked in there but having said that they also had genuine threat on the breakaway the first of those moments was from a set piece the other thing is they were a big team of set plays they they packed a genuine threat they were crowding Leinton out consistently on corners and causing an issue and the first one they did got into the net eight minutes corner from Berris on the left hand side terrific crowd in the six yard box I counted 12 players in the six yard box plus Leinton on one corner and the ball was swung in towards the far post a big man got up Clark the centre back and headed it into the net and the ref seemed to give the goal uh, nobody seemed to be complaining, to be honest, from the Wrexham defenders, but the linesman put his flag up and saved Wrexham, just as the Retalifax fans were in full voice celebrating. So a lucky escape for Wrexham, and another lucky escape soon afterwards, the first of a number of excellent breaks by Halifax, after Akeel Wright had lost the ball unnecessarily in midfield, Edwards driving down the left channel, cutting inside onto his right foot, and trying to rip a curler into the top right corner, didn't quite come back enough to the frustration of the striker. But Wrexham were dominating possession, were moving the ball around well, were trying to be patient, were trying to f probe, fond up was a nuisance. Rutherford was scurrying around. Summerfield was getting his head up and, and trying to create, and particularly in the first half. Well, maybe that's not fair. Maybe throughout the game, Jennings was a very prominent figure trying to get up and down the flank on the left-hand side and, and getting himself into positive positions. And Wrexham were working extremely hard to try to make something happen. Carrington with a, a nice little chip towards Fondop, who did ever so well to take it on the chest, spin uh, just outside the box and hit a start on the stretch. It was always going just wide at the left post, but a really good effort by him. And then a minute later, uh, Maguire drew, swinging in uh, a free kick towards the edge of the area, 15 yards out, Fondop making contact with a terrific glancing header, heading into the top left corner, a good save by Johnson, who lunged at full stretch and was able to catch the ball. 
Then another of those nasty Halifax crowded corners. The ball swept in. There was a scramble in the, in the, in the massed six-yard box. The ball ricocheted and looked like it was bound to be a goal. Summerfield, luckily, was on the far post. Did a better job on the post than he did against Bromley a couple of weeks ago. Took it on the chest and calmly managed to get the ball clear. But Wrexham finished the half well with a couple of opportunities. One of which was a very controversial moment. Now we need to have a look at this again on the replay. Carrington on the right-hand side, chipping another good ball down the flank. Rutherford ran in, got behind his man. The Halifax defender, well, got something on it. Rutherford was absolutely adamant that he'd raised his arm up and handled the ball. Got to be honest, we couldn't see from where we were clearly. And we also couldn't quite see whether it was in the box or not. It was close to being in the penalty area. The reason I suspect something happened that needs to be looked at on the replay is because Rutherford was absolutely incandescent with rage that the referee hadn't given the decision to Wrexham. He was furious. You don't see Rutherford doing that. Rutherford's the calmest bloke you could imagine. He went crazy at the linesman. He went crazy at the referee. I think something happened there. I can't say for certain, but I would like to see that again. Wrexham might have been robbed of a penalty. And then in the last minute of, of the half, uh, another shout, but much less convincing. Jennings breaking forward, a nice one too, but Maguire drew. Jennings going into the box, shoulder to shoulder with Hansen. Jennings went down. There was a big shout for a penalty, but not really from Jennings. I think he went down a bit easily. Maybe even was just trying to get there and was just knocked off balance. But Jennings tried to carry on playing. Uh, as in the second half happened, when Raquel Pike went down in the box, big shout from the crowd and teammates. Pike just carried on trying to chase the ball on the, the Pike occasion. I think Pike ran into the box. A defender came across and had the body shape of someone who's going to stick his leg across the striker. I think Pike maybe started to go down thinking the leg was going to come out, but it didn't. So Pike just got straight back up again and kept chasing. So I think the referee right on those occasions, but the handball is one I think is worth revisiting. Second half had a, a similar pattern. Early chances for Wrexham where Maguire drew looking to deliver for Fondop. Uh, firstly, a uh, nicely struck Maguire drew cross Fondop. Just couldn't control his head. properly planted it well wide. And then a better effort, a free kick by Maguire drew lifted enticingly in around the penalty spot. Fondop did well, just engaged with the centre back, made contact with him, leaned on him, and then when the ball came in, was able to lean over the top of him and plant a powerful header. But it was just over the bar. A decent effort that, and that was the pattern for the, the rest of the half. Wrexham dominating possession, probing, trying sometimes to give extra pace to their passing. Sunfield was particularly good at that but really finding it hard to break down a vast Halifax side which played essentially a 4-2-3-1. The, the, the two midfielders were just sitting in front of the back four and the two wide men worked with terrific terrific energy to get up and down uh, and make sure that the fullbacks were never left exposed and it was actually on the breakaway Halifax were making the better opportunities Edwards down the left hand side coming inside and managing to beat his man a tight angle but with no support he decided to have a go it was a powerful shot but Lainton saved it comfortably and then with six minutes left as Wrexham really tried to pile on the pressure uh, a two on two break and Cosilo the danger man bursting forwards Oh, picked the wrong option, I think. Trying to play a little disguised blind pass, looking one way, playing at the other. Didn't realise that Carrington, who had a terrific duel with him, was there and was able to make the interception. By this point, uh, Wrexham made a couple of interesting substitutions, the key one being Fondop being withdrawn, which, as you be, what you'll hear Lee and I talk about later on, maybe wasn't necessarily the right decision. Fondop was roughing up the centre-backs quite well, or Heel Pike was doing well coming in from the left flank. After that, Pike was moved inside and didn't have the same impact on the centre-backs, I didn't think. Although Bevan, the replacement, was very, very sparky indeed. In the 89th minute came Halifax's big chance, and it was so close to a, a desperate winner. Again on the breakaway, Preston doing absolutely superbly. First he beat Akeel Wright, who, for the second time in the match, tried to stop a breakaway by just smashing a bloke's legs under him, and missed. So no yellow card. He carried on. He then managed to beat Pearson, who all through the game had done superbly in one-on-ones, and he'd opened up a chance. 15 yards out, right channel. He drove it powerfully across Lainton. An absolutely superb save by the Wrexham keeper, who lunged low down to his right and managed to palm it around the post. The referee... Added three minutes on and did well to make sure that we got good value for money as well because Halifax uh, made a substitution which I timed, which took a minute. And the ref, to be fair, added no more than a minute of added time on, but Wrexham still couldn't break through. There was on last hope when there was a bit of a scramble in the box. Holroyd had a shot which was blocked. It span out to Bevan and 
desperately trying to stretch for it. He, from 15 yards, he slashed the ball well off target. It was a very difficult shot to control. But it was a, a good performance by Wrexham, a, a sensible performance by Wrexham as they tried to, to work their way through a Halifax team that looked exceptionally well organised. They turned full-time in the summer and you could see the rewards on that. That was a, that was a very well-organised Halifax team. And Wrexham, maybe a little nucky not to grant themselves a goal and clinch themselves to three points. But a pleasing, fascinating match to watch uh, and another positive outcome for Wrexham. For a bit more analysis, have a listen to what Lee Milford and myself thought of the match post-match on Calon FM. This is the Final Whistle Podcast for the Wrexham AFC media team. Right, that was a false alarm. I'm telling you, sorry, chaps, but... Uh, the app that we used to do our radio recording had a, had a bug in it, which was fixed earlier in the season where it wouldn't record the whole game. And I fear it's done it again. So annoyingly, that's where the podcast ends. Just to give you a little taste of what we were discussing on the Callan FM uh, post-match discussion, uh, Lee and I felt that maybe Fondop had been taken off a little bit, a little bit early, in all honesty. But we're admiring Bevan's endeavour working up and down the left-hand side. Good work by Summerfield as well, snappy passing. Mark Carrington was made man of the match by Lee, and quite rightly, mm-hmm. Carrington was a class act and won his duel against Costello, defended well, but got forwards well too. There were also honourable mentions for Sean Pearson, who made some excellent tackles when exposed one-on-one. And, well, sorry about that, and frustrated you weren't able to see, hear what Lee had to say, because he, he nailed the summary of the match spot on. So I'm really, really sorry about that. Frustrating. But uh, hopefully, when we moan, the app will work properly for Saturday at Braintree. I've been Mark Griffiths from the Wrexham AFC media team. This is the Final Whistle Podcast for the Wrexham AFC media team.